Today I'm going to show you how to make anything do damage in Rec Room. But to start, we first need to talk about life and death. You see, none of us are actually alive in Rec Room. That's why if you shoot somebody or hit them with a sword, it doesn't really do anything. We're in a kind of limbo state. So, first, you must be alive in order to take damage and die. The simplest way to do this is to get an event receiver and an integer variable, configure the receiver to player joined, and hook it up to the integer variable. Configure the integer variable and rename it to health, then set it to 100. Now, whenever someone joins the room, they automatically get 100 health. Hey, future RCL here. You actually have to add in an if player is local in between the event receiver and the health. Sorry about that. But even though they have 100 health, no one can see it. So we need to display that health. We have two ways to display health in Rec Room. We have the game HUD, which is what you actually see on your screen. And then we have world UI, which is like life bars and text above your head. I'm gonna show you how to do both. So let's start with the game HUD. First, we need to get a game HUD element constant and a set HUD element enabled. And we can go ahead and hook up the execution to that and hook up the constant to the target, flip the false to true. And then we need to configure this game HUD element. So here's where you actually choose what the player is gonna see. All we wanna have is a bar, primary bar. We're gonna make it green and we'll give it a 100 value. And if you hit this button right here, you can actually preview what it looks like. Now let's move on to the world UI. First, we need a player world UI constant and a display player world UI. We'll go ahead and hook up the execution to the display player world UI, hook the target up to our player world UI, and then leave that as local player. Now we need to configure the world UI and actually tell it what we want to display. We do want a primary bar at 100 value and we're gonna change it to green. Our secondary bar, we won't worry about that. And text, we don't want any of that. That should be everything we need. So now whenever a player joins, they get 100 health. Their HUD, which is the bar in front of their face, gets set to 100 and displays. And then the green bar above their head set to 100 and displays. So now that we've given life, we need to determine what is going to do damage. Today, I'm gonna to give you three examples. Number one is the punching system from my previous video. Number two is the sword. There's some extra circuits you need for that and I'll leave a screenshot here, but I won't go through them. And number three is a projectile launcher, which is just a gun essentially. So now that we know what is going to do the damage, now we need to record the player who is going to be damaged and determine how much damage each thing does. For that, we're gonna have to make a custom event. So first get an event definition, then we're going to configure that event definition, rename it to whatever you want. We're gonna call it do damage. Then we need to add two properties to it. The first one is gonna be the player who got hit, and it needs to be a player property. Then we need to add in the amount of damage. That is gonna be an integer. So here we have our event and it's got two different properties. So now we're gonna use these two chips, the player variable and an event sender configured to our custom event. We're also gonna change the target to all. Then you wanna connect these two and we're gonna use these two chips on all of our damage methods except for the projectile launcher, that one's a special case. So I've taken those two chips and just moved them over here next to my punching circuit. All I'm gonna do is after the audio plays making the little punching noise, we want it to define what our player is that got hit. And over here I've got current hit player. Then we wanna determine how much damage it does. I'm gonna have a punch do 10 damage. Then I'm gonna select both of these and clone them other to our sword damage. And here we want to record the player that enters the trigger zone. After somebody gets hit, we want to record that player. And again, determine how much damage it does. We'll make a sword hit do 15. Now for projectile launchers, you actually have to use something called a player definition board. Once you get the player definition board, you need to edit into it. Now once you're in here, you have to get an event receiver. Now, when you're editing into a player definition board, you get access to certain events that you wouldn't get access to outside of it. So if I hit configure, 
on this event receiver, you'll see we have like explosion hit player, you see projectile hit player, okay? So this basically goes off whenever a projectile launcher hits the player. Now for here, you want if player is local, go ahead and hook that up to the execution, then hook up hit player. Then we wanna get our event sender. We can go ahead and hook up the is local, figure it to send our do damage event. Again, going to all. Now here we have an option for the damage. We could either define the damage or we can use the damage that's defined on our projectile launcher. I'm just gonna make it do 20 damage. I'm also gonna hook up the hit player to hit player. Now, once you do this, make sure to configure the player definition board and make it active and then save the room. If you don't do that, the guns won't work. All right, all of our different damage methods are all sending damage, but we have nothing to receive the damage. So we'll start with an event receiver to receive our do damage event. All right, so you remember how they were set to be sent to all. Well, now we wanna take that all and limit it down to the actual player who is hit. And for that, we need a if player is local chip. Go ahead and hook up the execution and make sure that we're only running on the system of the player who is hit. Then we want to get a copy of the health variable. Make sure that it's a copy and hook up the is local. Then we're going to subtract our damage. So we need to subtract. So we want to take the health that we have and we want to subtract the damage that's coming from our weapon. And then we want to make our new health whatever the new total is after subtracting the damage. Then we need to update the health bars, the world UI and the game HUD. So for that, we need set game HUD element value and we need set player world UI primary bar value. That's a mouthful. We're gonna hook both of these up after this execution. The new value for both of these is gonna be whatever our new health is. And then our targets are gonna be those constants from way over here. So you remember these constants from way here in the beginning with the player joined? We still we have to reconnect those to our new chips over there. My mistake, actually we only have to hook up the game HUD one. The other one is just a player, which I went ahead and hooked the player up to our hit player over here. Okay, so now player joins. They get 100 health, if all their bars are set up. They get hit with either a sword, a gun, or a punch. It does the damage that will come through here. Subtract whatever the damage is from their health and then update their health bars. Now we need to kill them in case their health hits below zero. So now after our bars have been enabled, we need to get an if chip. Then we need a less than or equal to. Hook that up to your bull variable. We wanna check and see if their health is less than or equal to zero. Now in my last PVP video, people were angry that I didn't use the eliminated role that's already in every single room. So we are going to give them the eliminated role once they are dead, essentially. Wait three seconds, respawn them, and remove the role. Add role. Also, let's go ahead and get the remove role, but I'll set it over here. So if that is zero, then add the eliminated role. Then we hook our target up to our player over here. Let's do the same thing to our remove role, but we'll hook this up at the end. So let's add in a three second delay. Now, after this to respawn them, you can either use a respawn chip, a set position, or a set transform. I'm just gonna use a set position so that it's less things I have to hook up. The target we're setting is our player. And then for position, I'm just gonna use a vector create to go zero, 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 but you can change those numbers to have them spawn anywhere on the map. Then we can hook up our remove role. But wait, we're not done. Because once they get respawned, you still have to reset all of their bars, all of their health, everything like that. So we're gonna go grab another copy of these three chips. The health one, the set HUD value, and then the set world UI value. Just clone them and bring them over. Hook up our execution here. Remember that's 100 health. This target is our constant from way over here, the game HUD constant. And then our player here is the same player who is hit. All right, all that's left is the testing. If you need to take a closer look at the circuits, go to my clubhouse called Used Code RCL1. There's a sub room in there that has all of these circuits set up for you. All right, everybody, hopefully that video helped you. Throw a like on it, Used Code RCL1. And uh, our CL man out.